I'm Vicky Avery and I'm the Keeper of the Applied Arts Department here at the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge and I'm one of the co-curators of the Treasured Possessions exhibition. We're going to be talking about jewellery today, uh, particularly mourning jewellery. Um, jewellery has always been very much a treasured possession, whether, whether it's made out of expensive material or rather cheaper materials. Um, and people have always held it close to them, they've worn it on their body, they've carried it in their pockets, they've passed it on to loved ones in their wills. So as everyday material comforts became more widely available, life of course remained uncertain, with mortality rates remaining high across Europe. And so the popularity of mourning jewellery as a coping mechanism became particularly popular, especially in England. Dressed in sombre black for the mourning period, usually only those closest to the departed wore memorial jewellery, often a ring. And sometimes people actually specified to whom the mourning ring should be made, and they were often handed out at funerals. For example, the famous diarist Samuel Pepys specified that 128 mourning rings should be dispensed at his funeral, allocating £100 for their purchase. The Fitzwilliam Museum has a wonderful collection of jewellery, really from the Renaissance onwards, um, and within that a rather fine collection of mourning jewellery. A lot of it was given by Percival in 1922 as a bequest, but many other important pieces have come in afterwards. What we've got here is a selection of mourning jewellery that we've chosen for inclusion in the Treasured Possessions exhibition. Well, this square bezelled ring here is one of our our favourites. Um, it's English dated roughly 1790 to 1800 and as you can see it's got this rather beautiful blue eye painted on it and it's obviously the eye of the lover and you, you wear it and you gaze upon the lover's, um, lover's eye and gain comfort from that uh, interaction. So here we have two pretty similar looking mourning rings. They're both uh, gold bezels set around with either garnets or amethysts and they've got two mourning bushes of rosemary. The larger of the two was made in 1769 and you can see from the inscription engraved on the inside of the bezel that it was to remember Miss Judith Stubbs. She died on the 29th of July 1769, aged 59 years old. Uh, and we don't know for whom it was made, a relative perhaps or a friend. And this little chap, much, much smaller, you can see by comparison, was made two years earlier, again for a lady, you see Frances Green, Ob died 27th of July 1767, aged 61 it says, so much smaller that either was made for a very small little finger, but actually we think it's much more likely that it was made for a child. So perhaps this commemorates a grandmother or a great aunt um, or perhaps a benefactress. So here we have two pretty similar mourning rings, actually made just four years apart. You can see they're actually pretty similar in shape. We've got um, a female mourning figure in each case, leaning upon a classicising urn. Uh, and this one has an inscription, not lost but gone before, and the little angel or cherub says to bliss. Uh, this one, as we can see from the inscription on the reverse engraved on the back. This is made for the, Thomas, uh, for the Reverend Thomas Neal, who died aged 48 in 1782. So here we have three rather interesting pieces of uh, mourning jewellery, um, all rather poignant. And as you can see, they've all got woven hair of the deceased uh, child or children within them. This ring is rather unusual. You can see it's got the uh, woven hair in fact, of two children, as the uh, engraving says, W. B. Toms, who died unfortunately aged five in 1784, and his slightly older sibling, W. Toms, who died in 1786, aged 11 years old. We don't know if they were boys or girls, but presumably um, this ring made for the uh, grieving parents to wear to remember their two children. This again has this motif of now incredibly beautifully plaited and, and woven hair with a beautiful um, enamel and gold urn. You can see on the front it says TG of 1799 and we don't know who TG was but you can see it says sacred to the memory 
of an adopted child. So obviously TG was the beloved son or daughter of somebody. And in fact, what's very interesting about this is not a ring at all, it's actually a mourning pendant. It's in the shape of a seal that you can imagine, you know, rather than impressing uh, the seal into ink, it impresses the memory of this adopted child who would have been worn around, presumably a, a gold chain around the neck, and would have been invisible to anybody where you'd have to raise it up and look at it. So it's a very, very particular piece of mourning jewellery. So this very interesting selection of mourning jewellery forms part of the Treasured Possessions exhibition at the Fitzwilliam Museum and can be found towards the end of the exhibition in the section dealing with uh, commemoration of the life cycle. We start with it, um, objects to do with birth and christenings. We move on to marriage and betrothal and courtship and we end with um, um, images of death and mourning and these, uh, this is a section where these rooms feature.